Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is your host. And and Irvin, and this is Shining Spotlight, the stream where we highlight creators in the industry in order to inspire you guys. Today, we have a kind of a creator who is internationally known across the globe. He's highly, well, he's widely known for su such works such as The Courageous Princess, in which uh, has been nominated for an Eisner back in 2002, Neotopia, Battle Girls, and many more. He's cre even created a comic for the UN and WHO to fight against tuberculosis. He's even bigger than a single project. Today, we welcome a renowned creator of the uh, Adventure Finders, Rod Espinoza. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Rod. Thank you. Thank you, Irvin and Nico. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we're, we're so happy to have you on today. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Bob. I'm like, I might have sound like I was talking a little bit slow. I have an echo in my ear for some reason when I first started. I realized I had the window open in the wrong page. But in any case, let's get into some real questions that we have here today. So, you know, of course, um, you know, we're all creatives here. And, you know, we a lot of us have, you know, of course, we've seen your work. You know, your work has been you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, can you tell some of the creators out there who may not be familiar about um, your work, Adventure Finders? Just tell us a little bit about that. All right. Well, uh, Adventure Finders is um, it is uh, if you're familiar with the uh, Dungeons and Dragons and you know all the gaming MMOs, you know the uh, fantasy, you know fantasy adventure, you know multiplayer online games that are very popular, like uh, uh, what's called World of Warcraft, things like that. So it's based on that. The world is sort of like that. Uh, it's a fantasy. And at the same time, uh, it is a little bit like Game of Thrones. Uh, so it was actually inspired a little bit by my watching of Game of Thrones. I said, I, I think I could, really? I could do really? my own version of that. But I, I'd like it to have more fantasy, of course, because Game of Thrones was a little slow in rolling out the fantasy elements, I guess, you know. That was that was I don't know maybe that's a smart thing to do with the, for for their end but for me it's like nah I'd like to have elves early <laughs> you know no, I'm like on that yeah elves in the magic early so okay. you know so essentially it follows the adventures of these they used to be just first level characters you know those beginning characters and uh, right now they're they have actually been well, they're highly powered now so it's been a few years it's been actually about nearly five years now so but in game time i mean in comic book time that was probably just half a year this past but they've grown so much already and so it just follows their adventures and i and i wanted to do the more than just the regular quest thing you know because everybody you know what will make my story different so it's it's, it's episodic and it's online and it's a, it began as a web comic so um, I said, well, it's going to be like Game of Thrones, where, you know, um, something happens and then there's consequences and it just spirals out of control. And I, I understand now why J.R. Mar Martin has a tough time figuring out what happens next, because I'm having that same thing, too. Because it, it's not linear. The story is not linear like hero meets bad guy, bad guy defeats hero, and the hero gets his revenge and the town is saved or the kingdom is, you know. And, uh, it's pretty simple, but here it's different. Uh, you know, in the first episode, they save a child and then the child turns out to be consequential to their plot. I mean, even even somebody random like that could throw you off. So, uh, you know, things like that, like the child becomes responsible for triggering a, a series of events, you know, that are unforeseen. And now here they are. Here I am also trying to catch up and trying to trying to complete the quest, you know. So what begins as a simple es escorting job, which is usually what they give you when you're a low level character in those games. Or, or in Dungeons and Dragons, you know, you're always escorting merchants and you know, from bandits, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it, it began simply, but now it's like ballooned out of control. And book one is just literally them trying to get home. 
So <laughs> that became the theme. Like, okay, now this is like they they were dropped off the deep end of the pool, so to speak, and they're confronted with greater odds than they could handle. So it became like a survival thing in book one. So it just become like, uh, let's just try to get home in one piece and keep everybody alive kind of thing. So, and that that's how it is. And it's just friends adventuring. And that's why it's called Adventure Finders. And now in book two, just them getting down to the biggest city in the kingdom is taking a long time because of, again, all these side trips that I had to do. You know, um, they rescue one town from abusive authorities and suddenly that spirals out of control <laughs> because, the, you know, the local, the, the sheriff, the, the, the lieutenant that they, you know, that they confronted has a boss, not a boss's man, you know, that kind of thing. So th there's consequences to everything that you do in, in my world. Like um, if you save a town and my characters, I try to plot them differently. Like, you know, yeah. when, when there's a hero, right? Hero comes in, saves the town, and then he just leaves. And uh, I, I'd like to explore what happens, like uh, what happens after you do that. Because eventually, may, maybe the enemies will come back, you know? Well, they'll come back when he's not there, you know? So what my heroes do is that they stay around, make sure the town is okay. They even train up the people to do their own combat. You know, so there's a lot of after battle things that they do, you know, like make sure they're fine and they're capable of handling future dangers themselves before they move on. Uh, they leave a lot of knowledge behind. So it's, that's that's kind of like what I want to do with Adventure Finders. So it's different, you know. Yeah. And of course, um, I've got non combatants in the group too. Like they've got this. Uh, they, they, they hooked up with this, they rescued this noble woman. Now she's one of them, really. Uh, but she handles, like, a lot of the paperwork. You know, nobody pays attention to that. But but because of her, because she's so smart, uh, and she's a little bit of, t turning out to be a little bit of a criminal now, because she has, like, these skills in forgery. She She's an artist. She knows how to draw. And so, you know, so she now she can copy you know, calligraphy of other people, especially in the beginning, her own brother. So she, you know, when they rescue her, she starts literally forging checks, you know, <laughs> just to keep herself funded, but now to keep her little group funded, her friends. So, you know, she's a little bit of a criminal now. <laughs> you have to be if you're, <laughs> if you're a woman and, you know, in, in that world, you know, so you gotta be able to survive. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of that. There's a lot of uh, I deal with a lot of that that gray stuff in in the world. And now they have another. They hooked up with this necromancer. She's probably the most amoral one there. She's kind of like the killer of the group, you know. She just I you don't know if she values life or anything, but she just goes, yeah, I'm just gonna. Kill the enemy and like <laughs> to contend with her. Too. So, <laughs> go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say with the adventure finders. Then, like you know, kind of like if we're we are to kind of compare, like think like for example, like something like Game of Thrones, right? Like, do you right. ever plan on like doing like um, adaptations of it, like in the same way that like Game of Thrones got you know adapted, you know, into like a TV show? You know, it started off as a book. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind if somebody contacts me about it, but uh, for me to personally do that, I, you know, the, that uh, I, I answer the same way as if people go, well, why don't you animate it? Because I don't know how, number one. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, I, you know, I studied animation in college, and it's very hard. And character consistency is not my thing. You know, I... I can make animation, but it's so hard for me to do, and uh, I just I just literally have no time. I have uh, the other artists I've seen post their work on YouTube or something like that, but um, I just have no time to literally learn how to do it. And 
I wouldn't know. It takes a lot. To it begin. takes a lot. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I'll leave it to others. I mean, you know, <laughs> if they want to collaborate, I'm all for it. But uh, for me to do it myself, like make make a TV show, or I can't. I have to get the story out first, and then we'll see about. I don't want to end up like George R. R. Martin, who has incomplete work. I mean, I understand why it takes a long time, but I'm now I'm under the gun too because I'm like, okay, I'm I'm getting old. I only have like I'm counting literally counting the years. Okay, this is how many years I still have to do this series. So let's get it done first, and uh, we'll worry about all the other stuff later. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Does that answer it? <laughs> No, yeah, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. You know, I um, I was gonna say something about so, like, when it comes to um, um, I would say the yeah. process in which you know you actually did with coming up with the concept and you know being able to like design the characters for Adventure mm -hmm. Finders, like, what did that process look like in terms of like how do you how do you go about creating characters? What does that look like for you? Oh man, I, I'm glad you asked that. Because it, it's an amalgam of things, right? So you take a you take inspiration wherever you can. Like like I said, the seed for Adventure Finders began because I'm a gamer and I play Dungeons and Dragons live. Now that I we can no longer play live Dungeons and Dragons, because <laughs> it depends. You know? Well, you know, if there's some people around here, you know, they do what they do. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not the same with the. Uh, it's not the same with the. Uh, what do you call this? With the camera, you know. It's, uh, yeah, you know. I'm which I, I, I miss the tabletop. You know. Do you guys do tabletop real quick? I, miss? I, I did. I did it back in college. Okay. You know oh, what? I'm I'm gonna have to try it. I've been told several times like, "Oh, you need to try it." And it's like I just haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm right. Yeah. yeah, it's you know you should you should you should try it. it. It's fun when people are present, you know. And the online thing, I've watched it, and some people pull it off, but for me, you know. Anyway, it got triggered by that, and again, like I said, my watching of Game of Thrones, I said I can do my own series about this. So what inspired Clariette, the, the blonde girl there, or what inspired Clariette's design is actually, oddly enough, when I saw, uh, what do you call that? Um, the Three Musketeers, the Barbie version of that. <laughs> it's such an obscure direct-to-video thing. You know, I just saw it one day suggested on YouTube. You know how it is. You watch something and suddenly YouTube says, you might like this too. So, <laughs> so I, some YouTube suggested the Three Musketeers because I was researching about classical stories. So I'm like, oh, there's a Barbie, Barbie version of this? It's actually not bad. <laughs> so I watched it and I'm like, I should have a character like that. <laughs> And that's how it begins. You watch something and you're like, I'm going to make my own character like that, but this is what I'm going to change, you know. So so literally, even the, uh, even the name, because the Barbie's name in the Three Musketeers is called Clara, you know. So I said, mine will be Clariette, you know. <laughs> so, Clariette. And then her surname is also close to D'Artagnan. <laughs> So, so you know, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll just make a name that, like that. And then I mm -hmm. thought, well, how about the? Uh, so there's three archetypes. You know, you got your fighter, the the wizard, and the and the cleric, the healer, the magical healer. So those are the three beginning ones that you've seen. You've seen there. Uh, the uh, the wizard is Jolfi, uh, who is also jo when you look at his name. He's literally, I, I based his body type and some of his facial features on the Angry Video Game Nerd. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I used to love, watch the <laughs> Angry Video Game Nerd all the time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I used to watch that. I'm like, it would be great to have a wizard that's like the Angry Video Game Nerd, except I was never able to script in his magic items failing and all that because it's too many pages. You know, so I, I wanted to do him like a humorous person, but I you know never worked. <laughs> Go ahead, you were saying. Oh no, I was just going to say something briefly about the angry video game there. I was like, you know, <laughs> it's funny. Um, 
I mean, it's been a while since I watched this channel, but I always think about like the ET episode. I was like, I never knew about this, you know? Like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His horror, yeah, yeah the, the horror, yeah, his nightmare scenario. And uh, remember, his name is James Rolfie there. Mm -hmm. So, Jane Rolfie. It's just Jolfie. The, the, the wizard's I, name is Jolfie. Short I, name, I put them together. You know, that's how I come up with names, too. So, there's two characters right there. And then um, the third one is uh, her name is Anana Popple Venzi. So that's uh, that's another mix on names of popular people that I know. So uh, and that that became like the uh, she's she's a she's a half elf, but I wanted her to be half black, <laughs> you know, because oh, yeah. you never hear about that, you know. In no, fantasy, yeah, it's right. a half elf, but he's like half European, half elf, right? Mm -hmm. It's never anything so else. <laughs> want to have like a half elf but she went for a black guy yeah <laughs> no, I mean, elf with a black dude so that was that's her lineage you know so she's half black you know so it says half black half elf you know so um that that's the trio that you see there in the cover that's why that's why the elf has tan skin you know yeah I'm and she's that. kind of like the more the kind of like a moral compass of the group Yes, they're in their underclothes there. That's why. That's why she's all wearing white. But she usually has a nun habit. That's why she can hide her ears. Because in certain areas of my world, you know, they don't like elves. So that's kind of her, you know, her way of hiding the fact that she's an elf. Because she has this nun habit over her head. And you'll see probably in the other pictures that I sent you. Anyway, that's my trio. So I said, as soon as I have that trio, I've got to figure out how to introduce them and all that. So, so it's been a fun one. Yeah. You worked on this with, uh, with Antarctic Press, correct? I began with Antarctic Press, yeah. Um, it lasted about five episodes, five issues, one, two, three, four, five, then it got collected. And that was just part of book one. That was That's leading up to the fight, you know, the fight that changed it all, you know, because I'm kind of known in comic book circles for my issues long battles, you know, kind of like Dragon Ball Z in a way, you know, I, I, I consume a lot of pages just doing fights. And now I'm in my, the next fight in book three, where all of book three is a big, long battle, you know, because they're in the city now. And again, I take inspiration from Black Hawk Down. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that one. You know what? Like that's one of those movies like I can remember coming out, and I never actually like I watched it, but I watched it as a kid, so I don't even remember it. You know what I mean? Like I'd have to yeah. probably see it again. I know I've seen it, but it just—it's one of those classics where the whole movie is just gunfights. <laughs> So they get trapped in the city and just get just have to get out. <laughs> well, of course it's real life, but yeah, it's, uh, I based it on that. So, and there's a lot of Black Hawk Down references, even in book one. Even in book one, because I I don't know if you remember uh, the end of Black Hawk Down. They got left behind by the convoy, and they had to run. They had to run away from the angry Somalis. You know, so I'm like, oh my god, that had I to be funny. I have to rewatch that movie. Like, I'm like, it's funny. Like, I remember yeah. my my dad and I, like, he got like you know, when black of when Blockbuster used to be a thing. You know, got it from Blockbuster. Wow. Yes. And then it's like, yeah, that's all oh, I remember god. is like putting it in, and then now I'm just like, I don't remember. I just remember us getting it, and I don't remember the movie. Like, but I got right. like, I probably had to be like eight or nine or something like that when I looked at it. So I'm like, wow, yeah. you guys are young. Yeah, and I'm like 27 now, so just to get an idea. So, yeah, so yeah, you got your lives ahead of you. Uh, you know, man, you you got your lives ahead of you, and you got uh, you got a lot of years to to devote to this to the, this craft if you want. Well, that's oh, you, you, your volume cut out. Your volume. <laughs> well. While he does his thing, 
Okay. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> going, going back to what I was saying before in regards to uh, Antarctic Press. Um, sure. I was curious, like, what uh, what more in depth was that process like for the first five issues? Um, just, uh, just just to give the, uh, I guess, other professions an insider on what a uh, process is like with a uh, what a legitimate uh, company with the uh, editorial team and all that. You mean the publication process? Yeah. Yes. Usually, what happens is, um, well, they I present it to them, right, and. Uh, and because I, I already have a track record with them, uh, yeah, they'll they'll try they'll try whatever I'll, I suggest. So, so first of all, they say, "How long is this going to be? Is this going to have a sort of a good ending around episode five? Because that that's kind of like the maximum for mini series, five or six episodes. You know, four if you can manage it. So, if you have a four issue mini series, that's that's easy to say yes to." That's why uh, I always suggest to people, you know, don't don't give them like twenty episodes <laughs> or something like that. You know, just give them like a four issue, five issue story arc, so that they can, you know, they can see what the market, how the market responds to it, so how how the sales are, and then from there, if if the sales are good, then have the rest, you know, have the rest out. But it's good to have it in four or five episode chunks so that you can collect it. In the uh, in uh, the collective volumes, and that's important too because that's another market that goes into Barnes and Noble. And formerly there used to be Borders, so alas, just like Blockbusters, no more no no more Borders because behind <laughs> the scenes, <laughs> not behind the scenes, Borders is a better order. You know, so we, we can deal with Borders better. They have a better. They had a better system. They ordered manga more. They ordered your comics more, and they were the ones who went under. I'm like, what? <laughs> they were down for the cause. Why do the good guys always have to be the ones that are? <laughs> Man, borders were easier to deal with across the board, and they were the ones who had to go under. Damn. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, the collected version is for the borders and for oh, and for also comic book shops, you know. Because people love love the collected versions, love the graphic novelizations of the of the series. So if you can get them in four or five issue story arc chunks, and, uh, and sadly, Adventure Finders violated that <laughs> that that rule, and you can sort of uh, end the series at number five there, but it's still it's a hanging it's a hanging you know ending. It's a cliffhanger. So I see. No, but I'm yeah, here. that. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that the editorial process of that is uh, well, mostly it's you know uh, spellings and all that. Or sometimes they'll ask you like, uh, "Are you sure this is where you want to go with this character?" Because it might be, you know, they also advise you like, "Will it be? This might be controversial." Just so you know, that kind of stuff. So sometimes that happens. No. So when you have the controversial materials like that, like have you ever had a situation where they're like, we really don't want to push this, and you're just like, no, I'm going to put this out. I don't care if you guys run it or not. I'm going to put it here or there. Like have you ever had like a like any kind of like um, creative dispute that you've ever had to have, you know, over um, well, any messages and works or? Well, it, it wasn't much of a dispute. I knew it. Some people might have a problem with it. Some editors might have a problem with it. Uh, I, I knew that going in, like when, like when I will right now. I'm working with a, I'm working with Action Lab, and they looked ahead, and they saw like this. There's this episode in Adventure Finders where there's an exposed breast. <laughs> <laughs> and they said they they, they don't want, they're not comfortable releasing. I said fine, don't worry about it. And literally, the only time you see a breast in Adventure Finders is oddly enough when somebody's breastfeeding babies. <laughs> <laughs> that was, the, that was that, the only thing. And that was never, that was too much for them. <laughs> That's right. So uh, I just said, yeah, no worries. Just you cannot include the scene if you want, you know. 
So I'm I'm pretty easy with that kind of stuff. I was like, okay, you know. That, and then, of course, if, if somebody is going to publish book two now, there's going to be another rest scene there. It's the same character. The only thing is now it's, yeah, it's after they've had sex, so to speak. I don't show the act itself, but there's just them relaxing in bed and her spread out and, you know, with with like two guys on her either side, you know. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing. Basically, it's not like yeah, it's, yeah. you know, going full Game of Thrones with it, you know? Yeah, no, okay, no. no. <laughs> uh, it's just all of them have nipples, like the guys, the two guys, her, and the, uh, and oddly enough, the, the, the furry beast. So some people might have some, uh, you know, problems with that, too. <laughs> There's a community they might for that. Some, some kind of, uh, you know, 4chan related something. There, you have a fan base with that, yeah. Yeah, I know, like the furries, you know, like that they're gonna go for that, but you know, it's just for me that's that's the society of the that they landed in, you know, because um, because they just came back uh, in Adventure Finders, they just came back from the Rivendell experience, you know, because I said I gotta have my own Rivendell again, take inspiration from Lord of the Rings. I said I gotta have my own Rivendell, except my Galadriel is gonna be this. This this generous host who's gonna be a little touchy feely with her guests, you know. <laughs> so my own version of Galadriel is this, you know, uh, you know, sensuous woman, you know, that she kind of like a takes takes special interest in her guests. So um, yeah, and they have the uh, elf quest uh, elf quest orgy, so to speak. But you know, you don't see anything. Yes. Yeah, a lot of it's just implied, but yeah, they they have their you know, it's like the elves took advantage of the hobbits in the, in the, in the Lord of the Rings, except the Indians don't show that. But I'm like, ah, oh, no, I gotta have that in my world, you know, full experience. <laughs> you know? Just like I, I wanted to have like a remember that Wonder Woman experience, uh, Wonder Woman moment when she like. She and Steve got it on, so I'm like, yeah, just get it over and okay. it's done, you know. That was beautifully filmed. So I'm like, I gotta have. Oh, you're talking about like, 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 like Wonder Woman 1984, like that movie. You talking about that, or, or you talking about the first? No, one? No, oh, no, the first, early, one, the first one. The first Wonder the first Woman one. with. Steve, oh yeah, yeah, yeah Steve I, think, I don't know if they can get the first. That one. was that was beautiful film. We're like, it's a middle of a war, and it's just you know we like each other, and that's it. You know, you know, nothing. They just wanted each other for that moment, you know. So that's kind of the theme I was going for. That was the inspiration for that. So, you know, you you asked me about drawing inspiration. Here we are. I'm going. Cir- I'm always circling back to that topic because I'm influenced by so many movies and things. Yeah. And even with, yeah, even with Neotopia, there's like Star Wars in there. You wouldn't know, but if I pointed it out to you, you would go, "Oh yeah." That's when they ran to the Millennium Falcon while they were being shot at. <laughs> yeah, George Lucas is uh, one of your uh, influences as well, right? Definitely, yeah. It's big. Yeah. I um. I go ahead. Yeah. Oh no, no. I was just gonna ask you, like, so, like, in terms of like, um, you know, when you're, you know, pulling different influences in, basically, like, what do you? How do you decide what is, uh, you know, like, what to take away? out of like someone, you know, like how do you, how do you basically decide like, okay, this is how I'm going to construct this into my world as a creative. Right. Like this concept. Well, a lot of it is, uh, I guess I, it's more like, it's very fluid now. Um, I, I don't usually copy stories like every piece of it. So I take fragments from, from movies and comic books and manga and anime that I watch. And I'm like, I kind of like this scene. I think it'll work. Or sometimes I just use use the camera angle that they use, you know? Because I go, well, I like that shot when they presented the hero and he turned around and, you know, I love that. Mm -hmm. Just that one, that that little segment. So I said, okay, I'm going to take that and introduce my hero that way too, you know? See, I I like the fact that you said that because I feel like, a lot of times, like you have some creators, like uh, especially like, um, and what a lot of people call like the uh, like the OEL manga community, like uh, original English language manga, that will right, uh, yeah. 
like nowadays, I'm going to say like some of the newer creators, you know, sure. a lot of us may um, not like, not that we don't, we don't have different influences, but we'll like basically see something that we like. And some of us, instead of pulling um, inspiration, like in the way that you do, we might just almost make a fan fiction out of what we like. So I like the fact that you pull from different places is that's, that's the way that people should be doing it. But a lot of times people don't do that. <laughs> they just like, I like this. Let me just change it up, you know, and just change the name and just keep it the same. Right. Yeah. Well, so, sometimes that happens like early on in my career, uh, the Prince of Heroes, the, the sci-fi series that I, that I released, literally used to be a ripoff of Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, it changed over time now, you know, I, I, I added elements of Kung Fu to it. You know, I said, I gotta have like martial arts, I gotta have swords in it, like a Chinese Kung Fu movie. And that's when you start blending things into the soup that you're making, you know, you add more ingredients to it. So, so people, but you know, you, you can see, I, you can look at any of my books and I can tell you where I got certain scenes, you know, I mean, you can draw inspiration from anywhere, like even the Godfather. You know, yeah. Even certain lines. Sometimes this is lines of certain characters. I'm like, I like that line. Yeah. I gotta, you know, uh, especially this recent one, where um, Asagog is given this this advanced automatic bolt spitter, which is literally just a rifle. Really, I mean, I have a fancy name for it, but it's literally an uh, an advanced rail gun. You know, <laughs> he describes it as, oh, the the little bolt doesn't even touch the barrel while it exits the muzzle kind of thing. So <laughs> literally, that's a magnetic rail gun, but uh, I don't term it that way. So, and then he goes, I'll put this to good use, which is what NPCs say in video games, like especially in Diablo, I'll put this to good use when you give them weapons. Yeah, <laughs> so... And so I, 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 I got to use that line. So there's a lot that you just pick whatever you want from from different, you know, genres. And if it fits, then then yeah, because you know some lines are iconic and memorable that way. So I just go, yeah, sure. If it suits the scene, you might as well, you know. You know what what I don't like is just copying everything scene by scene. Now you're like. Ah. Uh -huh. Want to do that, yeah, so exactly. I'm very aware of that. So I try not to do it, but uh, I can usually tell. So when people are doing that or just making their own, you know, and and it's the same with every other video game. You want to play a video game, you go, oh, this is a copy of this. They copy these scenes from that game or something, you know, or if they're making something totally new. That's actually an interesting topic you bring up uh, because uh, one of the thoughts, you know, especially uh, with talks with our prior uh, guests on the show is uh, is the notion of originality in the within this industry, uh, especially right. in the OEO community. Actually, before we get into the, to move into that topic, there is something I sure. want to bring up really quick uh, just for everybody who's watching. Um, so we're just going to take a quick, well, not a break, but it's a quick moment right. uh, just to do a brief mention. Um, so for those of you guys who out there who are into podcasts, um, I definitely. <clears throat> uh, well, might cut out there. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, everyone uh, definitely encourage you guys to check out the Honeycomb Hideout. Uh, one of our they're with uh, one of one of our partners here, especially partnered up with Imagine Nose Workshop. Uh, check out their podcast. They they talk about uh, a, a lot of uh, relevant uh, or how should I put it? Interesting, Howard Stern for funny geeks. slash you know the, the, yes, the good stuff for us uh, fellow geeks and uh, blurbs within the community. Anyway, just a brief mention. Just wanted, to, and there'll be a link down below for you guys to check that out. Um, in any case, let's get back to the interview at hand. All right. <laughs> Yell. What yes. was the question again? So um, in the uh, original English language community here, uh, it's, it's interesting you brought up uh, the notion of originality because within uh, our little our community, uh, we are we're seeing uh, a lot of fan base uh, works and agendas basically put out there and. 
and uh it seems like they you know well it, from from our personal experience even uh it seems like there's a lot of creatives you know more so nowadays copying some of the some of the greats of the prior generation or few generations ago where you're seeing tropes basically obviously copy pasted carbon copies of certain characters the whole sundere you know uh red headed princess you know uh main character or main heroine you know you, you could just basically copy that character insert here just new name and it's the same it seems like it's the same character sheet Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you'll you'll get a lot of that. I mean, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, I guess. And uh, I'm actually curious. Uh, yeah, did you was there any particular period you noticed this like starting to like increase? Because um, a, a lot of our prior guests, it, it seems to be like it was a certain time period where uh, there was a lot. It was manga uh, or creatives and the and sequential art all around whether it was com comics or manga or uh mm -hmm. hong kong and and uh and what have you it seemed like they were booming but and there was a lot of creativity a lot of originality there was a lot of innovations but at some point we got to the current narrative with uh mm -hmm. carbon copies so it was is there any particular point you noticed that transition happened oh uh, in my experience it's it's always been like that, I think. I mean, because I worked, I worked at Antarctic Press as an editor in the early 2000s. So it was like 2001, all the way up until around 20, 2008, you know. So that was a, a solid eight years of working at Antarctic and getting all, and I used to be submissions editor. So as early as that, at least I got exposed to a lot of derivative stuff. And uh, sometimes I don't even know the exact manga they're copying it from, but I'm like, hey, I know this looks, I've seen this in Barnes and Noble or North Borders, you know, and you know, it's just, it just happens, you know, and uh, you just have to separate the, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. And um, one of those used to be um, uh, this title called Legends of Darkwood, which it's a completely original take on the fantasy genre, you know, which is why we accepted it and it became a four issue mini series. You know, it's very uh, tongue in cheek and it's very uh, it's like a parody of uh, a lot of adventure fantasy tropes in, you know, but there's an actual story there to be told. So, uh, so when you see gems like that, um, you, you snap them up real quick, you know, what we missed out on was that series Dead at 17. <laughs> All right. That was the beginning of the zombie, the zomb this current zombie craze that we have now. Uh, there was a comic book back then. It was called Dead at 17. Dead at the symbol at 17. And uh, it's one of those things where we wish we picked that one up. But it was picked up by somebody else, and now I think it became like, it got option for a movie or something like that. So anyway, uh, we don't, I don't know the up, update of that, but uh, but yeah, there's always been derivative stuff, I guess. And uh, one of the dead giveaways is when I see them describe the character and then they have a blood type there. <laughs> like that's the Japanese thing, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And as soon as that shows up in American manga, I'm like, we don't care about blood types in America. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? Zodiac? It was, a, it was a Japanese thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, or Zodiac, or, you know. Zodiac maybe a little, but when you when they start mentioning, here's the bio of my main character, and here's their blood type, I'm like, you got that from, you got that from the manga. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh, man. yeah that was one of those things i'm like here you go there's the blood type again like <laughs> everybody doing that or everybody has like stories that are set in japan they don't um set them anywhere else but japan you know yeah, and they have japanese names for some reason like oh, come on man just james smith going <laughs> 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 to james smith he, 
you know, Hikaru something, you know. Oh my gosh! Oh my <laughs> gosh! And then, and then the worst are the ones that are like you don't know how much. And then he has a, the worst are the ones that have a Japanese pen name, oh you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you're an American kid. Come on, you're not fooling me. <laughs> just, just do your name. Just, you just took <laughs> shots at the whole OEL community. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah, but I. But all, all at the same time, though, I sometimes wonder, like, oh man, maybe I'd be, maybe I'd be more famous if I called myself Matsuhiro Toyota or something. <laughs> We used to right. joke about that in Antarctic Press. Like, what if we call ourselves like a uh, Suzuki Honda? <laughs> oh my gosh! You know. Like an author name, you know, author name Suzuki Honda. You know, it's in just our- obviously we want to parody it. But you know, <laughs> go ahead. You were saying? Oh no! So like, okay. So actually, you know, this um kind of brings up another thing. So like, in terms of like, you know, for those OEL creators out there, they're like, you know what? Like, I want my stuff to actually stand out and i want people to respect my you know like my content you know as is like what is your recommendation to those creators that you know do it in like a manga-esque style but Mm -hmm. they there's aspects of manga they like but they want people to recognize it you know and not look at it like a knockoff right well you know just be yourself uh that's what made ninja high school popular you know um, Ninja High School was created by Ben Dunn. He uh, he draws in the manga style, but he he set his world in a small town in America somewhere. And then literally the concept is it's where anime characters hang out or where superheroes go to retire kind of thing. You know, so you see like, uh, you know, his town is full of parodies of anime characters. You know, some of his... Some of his, uh, well, one of his main characters is based off of uh, that Mimi's delivery, I mean, Kiki's delivery service. I love you know? Kiki's delivery service. He just called her Mimi. <laughs> he just called her Mimi. She has a broom, she has the cap, you know, but, you know, you turn it into your own thing, you know. Uh, she has, and then she literally lives in Sabrina's house, you know, so you got the mix there. I love when people do that, you know. So she has an aunt or something that looks like Sabrina's aunt. So, uh, and then, you know, she got relatives that look like Sabrina's aunties. You know, so I love that that mixing thing, and I wish they you'd do more of that, because that would, that would actually sell. <laughs> that would actually sell, you know. Uh, but, yeah, just be yourself. Uh, you don't have to, you know, uh, when I when you see all some, some submissions, they're like, you're copying the desks from the school in Japan. <laughs> Those are little like Japanese style school desks, you know, like I don't see that in American school. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun to actually have a the have guy a sitting school. out looking outside the school, you know, in the corner all the time, you know, <laughs> sitting in the back, you know. They always do you know, like, is that like, your experience. Uh, They're like, No, you know, I've seen it in anime. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen it in anime a lot, you know. And, uh, it, it's fine. It's fine if you copy like the skinny guy with the long hair, you know, uh, androgynous look. I mean, it's fine if you copy that style, uh, but but make something unique out of it. Like make it your own. You know, what what makes it what makes it unique? What makes it memorable? And it may, what makes it yours? Kind of thing, you know. Like I said, you can just mix the elements together. You don't have to literally copy one movie or you know one one series. Even in fact, that's what Ben did with Ninja High School. He had elements of you know Indiana Jones in there. He had like Back to the Future. He would just throw in anything and anything he found fun. You know, he had RoboCop in there. You know, <laughs> he had a RoboCop knockoff character that's drawn in an anime style you know in fact he was one of the earliest ones that did like the uh i'm gonna make a female version of this just so they can get a get around the i'm not literally copying robocop because this robocop's a girl (laughs) (laughs) now copyright terms you can get away with that 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 that's a yeah it's a pretty uh 
what do you call this? It's a pretty sharp edge to dance on. But if you're good, you can you can do it. You know, you can go. Yeah, I can. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do with this new character, Supermodel Girl. You know? <laughs> it's literally Supergirl, but I put model in there. Right? Supermodel Girl. It's still the same. Mm-hmm. She's got superpowers. She can fly, you know. But it's Supermodel Girl. She's prettier than the original. There's <laughs> 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 just things that I do, you know. I just come up with them, you know. And that's the thing. You, can, you just have to keep up coming up with these characters because a lot of the characters that we come up with may not work at all, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, in my own life, you know, there's only one character that really sells well, it's the Courageous Princess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I gotta tell you, man, 20 years doing this, I was getting a little worried that uh, I may not succeed, you know? (laughs) So, the Courageous Princess is the one character that persevered. Well, yeah, ever since the beginning, it keeps selling. So I'm glad that I have that one book that that sells no matter what. So again, I, I came up with a thousand characters, and the and the, that's the one that that hit. So so that's my advice to creators: come up with as many characters as you can, because one of them is gonna hit. You know. Uh, we can't all be like the Beatles where all the songs are hits, you know. Well, I mean, Sometimes. you've even done stuff like on a grand scale, like, um, you know, as we said earlier, um, you know, you um, did a comic for the UN. Like, that to me is yeah. huge right there. Where I'm thinking, like, wow, like, literally, where they're like, yeah, like you did a contest and you got in and basically, you know, you're fighting, you know, on a humanitarian level. You know, that's huge right. to me, you know, because I mean, especially as like writers, we all want something to say, right? So. I agree. I agree. And I still, I'm very proud of that one. It's a 24 page book, but man, that is my most printed and most translated book ever. Cause it's a small pamphlet and they distributed it cheaply to a lot of countries to educate people about tuberculosis. I'm actually very proud of that. If it saves one life because they, you know, they took precautions and they, they did the precautions in that book, man, I, I'm a happy guy. I made a big difference in some people's lives, and I, you know, very happy that it was my art that was featured there, and you know, it's so, it so one of my proudest moments. After that, I go, well, I anything can happen now. I'm, I'll always have that achievement, <laughs> you know. So yeah, you're right. Well, thank you for that. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, that still remains my top, my top achievement so far. You know. Yeah. No, thank you for that. You know, I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm just, yeah, you know, and um, also like, so well, actually before we get into these last uh, last bit of the interview, I do want to say if you guys are new to Shining Otaku, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. We want to make sure this interview with Rob blows up as much as possible, spread it far and wide. You know, um, it's a pleasure, of course, today for us to be sitting here with you, Rod. Uh, So before we get into the last half of this interview, again, just make sure you like this video and share this all around to spread it out there, you know, and make sure you go ahead and, of course, follow Rod's pages. We'll link them down below um, once the interview is done. All right. Now, that being said, uh, getting into the last part of this, I'm curious, with all of everything that you do, like, do you have any rivals? Like, I know that's like a charged question. When I ask anybody, do they have any rivals? They're like, what? What? And I'm like, even if it's not a rival, like, do you have anybody who creatively challenges you as like a professional, like in a good way? Hmm. I think about that. I have a. They're not rivals. They're they're my colleagues in art. You know, because I admire, I admire so many new artists now, and uh, and here's here's part of. What we have to control as artists, I always talk about this, and I become sort of like a therapist on all these interviews. You have to control that darkness within you. <laughs> the dark side of the force is always there lurking to wreck your life. And you know, we all know what that is. And sometimes it's comparing yourself with other people. And man, there's a lot of young talent out there, They're younger than me. Not just the Filipinos. I mean, gosh, the Filipinos ones. There's so many of them now. 
you know, and uh, and there's, uh, you know, talent wise, they, they of course they got me beat. Like I can't do anatomy, you know, <laughs> I can't do the details of Harvey Tolibao or I can't do the, he's got insane details. And then you find out he drew it on this tiny sheet of paper, like a, like a sketch card. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's not a comic book cover. How did you fit all that in there? You know, cause he would take a picture of it and he would put the pen that he drew with beside the drawing it will be a sketch card size thing, but it's a cover. That's a comic book cover that you're doing there. I don't know what he draws with. It's like, like a needle-sized pen or something. But, man, there's so many guys. I mean, uh, the top yeah. the top dudes in comics, and they're, they're very young, and, you know. And they're, they're, there's another one. There's this girl, and there's this Filipino girl who draws these painted covers. Oh, my God. You know, there's I don't think there's, I think there's already two of them. So then they're in their twenties, and you're like, if you if you you know if you allow that to to rule your life, I mean, you'd be you'd get sad and you know you'd get depressed. It's you know? <laughs> it's hot. There's a lot of talent out there, and then the thing is, you you're just in the contest with yourself. You know, that's what I always try to remind myself. I you know early on when when I was younger. I used to get bothered by all this, like, oh, he's better, he's, look, whoa, he got a movie deal, or just like that, especially in Anarchic Press, I, I, you know, I got, I was in contact with a lot of people behind the scenes, you know, because when you work for a publisher, you know who's getting all the sweet deals and all the scoops and all the, you know, way before Mark Millar sold his entire, we knew he was already selling that. You know, we've known that for a while, and you know, all these guys getting these deals. I'm like, why am I not getting? You know, so, <laughs> Never mind. so you, so you end up comparing yourself. And I thought that was a, you know, I've learned through the years to be a more of a, more of a Zen kind of person. You just let it go, and uh, you know, you're in a you're in a race only against yourself. If you're better than yourself last year, if you've improved, then that's a good thing. You know, don't don't compare yourself to Carlo Pagulayan or you know, you know he, those guys are the top tier. Of course, I admire them, and you know, but if you endlessly compare yourself to, to guys like that, you will you'll get sad and you won't get anything done. <laughs> you know, so uh, these days I just go, well, you did a good job here. You know, this is this is a good page. You know, this is a good series and. Every now and then, Facebook has been good to me like that. Like, it reminds me, like, Adventure Finders is five years old. Oh, wow. Thanks, yeah. Facebook. You, know, you reminded me that uh, I've done a lot of pages of this series already. And it and, and the time just went so fast. And at the same time, I've been able to do other things, like side projects, other people's characters, like 2021. My theme right now is doing other people's characters. So if you look at my Facebook timeline, I've done covers for Second Sight LLC, you know. I've done, you know, pinups for other companies. So, and individuals that just like to commission me for their characters. Like, I'd like to you to do my character this way. I said, sure, yeah, just send it in. Be more than happy to help you. So, uh, yeah, just helping other people with their characters and uh, all expanding my horizons. I said, I need, I need my horizons to expand again because it's the pandemic. You know, I, I've been too comfortable in my cave the last year. So I said, yeah, it's time to go out again and you know, meet new people. So, yeah, you're just a, you're just competing against yourself and always remember that, uh, you know, just be your best, be your own best advocate. You know, nobody will. Uh, and, and it's hard for me because I come from an Asian Asian background, so we're not big on like inflating our own ego and putting ourselves out there. We're more like, oh, you know, the work will speak to itself, kind of thing. Yeah, so, no, I think that that's you know, there's there's good aspects of that though, to be honest with you, because I'm like, I feel like over like like for example, like in like the states, you know, everybody wants to inflate their own ego and everything like that, and sometimes it comes at the expense of uh, you know, like people around them, you know, like it's always like just like, you know, like I did it myself rather than let's do it as a team, you know, and succeed. Right. Right. Oh, right. well, yeah, that, that's true too. I mean, there, there's aspects of both, 
Um, these days, I just try to promote my work either anonymously. I just go try this <laughs> without <laughs> mentioning without mentioning anything like I made it or anything. Like I just I just say, oh, this series is interesting. You might like it, you know. Or in the case of my own self-made game board, uh, it's called Adventure Kingdom. And then I go, yeah, this is Adventure Kingdom. You should try it if you like these games. That kind of thing. That's that's how I uh, that's how I promote my uh, own board game. You know, <laughs> so so that that is that. Does that answer your question, or do you need more elaboration on that? Or I know, I mean, that's fine for me. I mean, I think that makes sense. You know, I mean, I I don't know, Nico, did you have any? You know, I don't know if it was enough for you, but I'm like, it was enough for me. <laughs> well, but but, but um, that makes sense. <laughs> before I get yeah. to the the uh, last two questions, let me just go ahead and sure. we haven't addressed anything that comments. So peace, brothers. Hey, Ray mm -hmm. Hama, nice. thank you for showing up. Yeah. Peace, dude. Elite Ace, you already know what it is. Thank you, the Elite Ace. Yeah. Soul Elite Provider, Ace. Speak. salute. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, there's a lot of talent out there. You guys just uh, keep creating your work. That's all I can say is just create your work and be joyful in it. You know, uh, uh, I've experienced the highs and lows. I mean, I lived in my car. So like, I, I, that's how far I would go for comics. I can say that now. So when I was doing that, I'm like, should I, should I just live in my car to save my money? And I said, yeah, why not? <laughs> so, I said, I I just, like it's crazy, but, you know, I wouldn't suggest, you know, if you like it, because I, I made it sound appealing to myself. That's how I sold myself on the idea. Because I got into this RV group, I joined this RV club, and I'm like, I can do this. I can live in my vehicle. All I got to do is buy an E354 van. It's a huge, e, it's a huge van. So I'm like, I took out all the seats. So it's a 15 passenger van. I took out all the seats. And I'm like, all right, here's going to be the bed here. I just copied whatever people were doing on YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, thank the internet. You know, there's a community for this. And this used to be with Americans who have trouble with housing, you know, like, and my thing was that I just wanted to save money and stretch out my budget. I said I could live for maybe six months in an apartment or a year and a half or two in a van. <laughs> That's how far I thought. I'm like, uh, okay, six months in an apartment or a year and a half in a van. I said, let's go with a van. And it worked. So, you know, it's not forever. So I'm like, yeah, you know. That's actually an interesting just, respect. <laughs> you just know. have to have that thing that something something good will come up. So I, uh, I don't, I'm not going to say it's faith. Cause, but it's something close, something similar to that. You know, you have to trust in, you have to trust that something good will come out soon. That this is just a temporary thing. You know, so I, I can say I did it. So I'm like, all right, I can at least I can say I did it. But it was a, it wasn't a, wasn't unpleasant or anything. I actually slept really well in my van because, literally, it was the first house that was fully paid for. I mean, I owed nothing on that van. My own bed was in it, so I, of course I slept in it because I, I, my own, I moved my own futon in there. The futon that used to be in my apartment, I just moved the whole thing in there, and so it's the same foam, the same everything, and I slept like a baby, man. No worries, no bills. I'm like, oh man, I Made love this. Easier. In fact, I, I even say that if I got if I went back to the states and moved back to the states. I'd get a bigger RV. I'm like, this is great. All I need is an RV. I'd move around. I'll drive. Uh, if I don't like my neighbors, I'll drive away. You know, it's a whole other <laughs> lifestyle that I got into. And I'm like, all I need is a table, a table and a computer and internet. And that could all be gotten on the road. So I'm like, yeah. You know, in fact, I attended a con with the van. And I thought, oh, I forgot this. Oh, no, I didn't. It's in my home, and it's in the parking lot downstairs. So it's, it's a whole thing. I don't even have to pack when I go to the con when I did had the van. So I just said, oh, I forgot. No, I did not forget. It's in the van downstairs. It's in the house. It's in the house downstairs. Everything is in the house. So I'm like, I love it. So that's just me, though. It would frighten other people because of the small space. <laughs> but, you know, 
I mean, I considered myself, well, I'm, it's like in Japan, you know. You're living like a Japanese executive in a small apartment. What? It's no problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? The whole the community oh, hears that now. They're, that like, now. Huh. They're like, huh. You know, in some ways, I'm like, I'm living the life of an otaku right now. <laughs> like tiny apartment in Japan with like my personal things around me and a computer and that's all you know <laughs> I was you know it was an experience but yeah that's how far I was willing to go to pursue this comic book dream so but uh, hopefully that's not gonna happen to the rest of you so uh, you know just keep keep doing your work just enjoy we only have one life so Live it, live it, doing what you like, you know. Because when we go, that's it, you know. It's, it's game over. So I have to ask, like, this is like our final question that we ask. It's like oh, yeah. a question that we ask everybody. So, of course, it's going to be a little bit different for you because you're already further into your yeah, you're a veteran, you know. You're further into your career and everything. But what is your end game? The end game of this. Um, I have I have two jokes. I you know I have a joke about this because a friend of mine, she's an investment advisor or something like that, and she, on her website she says, "How are you planning for retirement?" <laughs> and I said I was hoping to just marry someone rich. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, yeah, but yeah, literally my my plan is to be like Charles Schultz, you know. I draw my last panel, and then I sleep, and then maybe I won't wake up. You know, that's that's how I plan like, plan to do this. Yeah, now, yeah. He drew his last panel, and then he just slept, and then he went to bed, and he never woke up. Right? That's it's literally how I want to live my life. Like uh, again, it's it's in an RV somewhere in Alaska. I'm fishing for salmon. You I have by salmon. The pen, you die by the pen. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna draw my last panel that night, and then uh, I don't know, maybe maybe, maybe uh, I'll just pass away in the wilderness and never to be found again. That's, <laughs> but no, no, uh, yeah, that, I just plan to keep drawing until you know. There's no retirement when you're having fun, and I thought, you know, I I don't I don't see retirement like society does, and this comes to my whole thing about lifestyles and you know getting out of the matrix getting out of the rat race kind of talk and when you enjoy your life when you enjoy your you know when you enjoy what you're doing like how i am right now and i'm like look at look if i didn't pursue this courageous princess wouldn't come about and i wouldn't be like uh, half retired now in my 40s so <laughs> So, you know, it, it kind of paid off. But, but of course, I took a big risk. Like, I thought it wouldn't happen, but I'm glad it did, you know. So, like, yeah, I'm glad it did. So, it enabled me to travel a lot, you know. I mean, the artist life, you're always moving around. So, uh, ever since I, I became a U.S. citizen in 2009, just to let you know, I went newly minted to the U.S. As soon as I got that passport, I began to travel. You know, went to New Zealand, Australia. I lived in Australia for almost a year because I could. Because as a comic book artist, all I needed was pen, paper, and a laptop. That's all I had. A, bad, a little uh, a little tablet and a laptop. I'm good to go. I lived my life in two suitcases. And uh, because of my van experience, I didn't have a problem with living little, having little, uh, having few belongings. So I rented out a flat in Australia. I was actually seeing someone there. That's why I moved there. <laughs> it didn't work out, but the experience was awesome, you know. So, uh, so <laughs> it didn't work out. But the the, the thing is, you tried. You tried it, and so I fell in love with Australia. You know, I I did my comics there. You know, literally just moved places. You know, so now I'm like, you know, because of the pandemic, I haven't I haven't flown anywhere, but I was looking at what my life has been for the last 20 years since I landed in Outrider Press. And I'm like, I've been in an airplane every three months since I went to Outrider Press because they started sending me to cons, especially San Diego, every year. And then after that, in 2019, my trips ramped up. I went, or like I said, I went to Australia, New Zealand, bounced back and forth. 
you know, I even applied to Weta at the time, you know, <laughs> said, man, maybe they'll take me, you <laughs> so, but this was around the time they were having that Hobbit dispute, so they weren't sure if they were going to get the Hobbit, so they weren't, they might have hired me if they were, <laughs> so, you been the one drawing it, <laughs> yeah, it was me and a friend of mine, a friend of mine who, who lived in New Zealand applied too, like, she was a classmate, now she works with them, she works at Weta. So I still have that in there just in case, you know. <laughs> so, I, uh, so I still, so because of the Courageous Princess, you know, I, I got to know uh, the guy that owns Weta too because uh, because of that book, you know. So that, that book has opened so many doors for me. And because I persevered and did that book, you know, I finished it in 2015. So you can see how recent that was. So I can say my life has been very, very colorful and rewarding because I pursued comics, I, I could not imagine working in some job somewhere and coming home to the apartment and doing that same thing every day. I mean, comic books is hard, but it's it certainly has been kind to me, I have to say. So uh, that that's why now I can recommend that, because uh, back then it felt hollow when I said, follow your dreams, because you know, felt you know, it felt empty if I didn't achieve it myself, you know? So now I can say that, yeah, follow your dreams, and you might even make, you know, be more, I'm like, a, you know, my success is not, I'm not a millionaire. Like I said, it's hard to yes. compare yourself with others. Yeah, it's hard to compare yourself with others, but, uh, but see, I'm happy with what I have. I'm able to travel, I'm able to do what I want, you know, uh, Go! I'd be there. I'd be there in the U.S. if it weren't for the pandemic. You know, in fact, I really had tickets in May of 2020. Just had canceled it because of the pandemic. You know, yeah. And I was yeah. supposed to stay there for a while. You know, go to Australia again. You know, <laughs> I've collected all these railway pass cards because of all my travels, and that's all possible because of my comic book life. And uh, well, I didn't. I would. I didn't spend a lot. So that's another thing. You know, you just have to be frugal in your life. You don't, don't have to buy a lot of things. You know, and in fact, they things hold you back, as I found out later. You know, because you can't travel often if you're laden down with a lot of material things at home. You're worried about oh, somebody might steal my sound system while I'm gone or something. You know, so <laughs> I've tried to buy small items now you know and that that continues on now even though i live in a house i just i still don't buy a lot of big objects because i'm like eh, i might i might live in australia again for a year then what you know mm -hmm. so <laughs> i'm very reluctant to buy a lot of expensive big objects that i can't bring with me and so i keep my lifestyle like this you know i'm always ready and always on the go you know, because that's kind of like the life that uh, that I that I like now. So uh, I was looking forward to spending a while in the U.S. and go, doing all the cons, and then you know, so that we'll see, we'll see about that. Maybe we'll meet in person one day. Oh no, I'm sure. You know, definitely. You know, especially once things clear up. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know that's the yeah. that's the goal. <laughs> um, Nico. Yeah. So hopefully that uh, helped you. <laughs> No, Hopefully you. that's in, uh, help inspire you guys. And uh, you no, know. I appreciate you coming on today. I really do. Like you know, we always talk about like like I think one of the big things, especially since you know um, you know your style is um, you know a lot more like akin to like manga. You know what a lot of people it you is. know would think. You know, I think one of the big things that you know we like to talk about, especially on this channel. You know, we have a lot of aspiring creators that you know, mm -hmm. of course, you know are you know, wanting to learn, wanting to know like ourselves, you know, so, you know, the fact that you, you know, you've done it, you know, you've been doing it, you know, so, you know, we appreciate you coming on the day to, you know, bestow us all with some knowledge. You know, thank, you. thank you. And you, yeah, yeah, you're welcome with that. I'm, I'm always happy to share anything. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, if, if, when we meet, um, I'm going to tell you a lot of stories that I, we can't cover right now, but there's <laughs> so many stories about comic books that, uh, you know, even, even if I was having a hard time back then, I look at it, 
I guess it was again the it's the attitude that you come with it. Because if you complain like, ah, oh, this is so hard kind of thing, uh, you know, you're going to defeat yourself right out the gate. And uh, even when I was uh, an Arctic Press, I was just literally, I'm, I'm a guy carrying boxes, really. You know, I saw that as, hey, I'm getting a free workout. I actually was stronger back then. Now, like, I kind of miss that. I'm like, I wish I was carrying boxes again. It's like, so many we carried so many boxes that i i was really fit so <laughs> I, I appreciated the cardio workout that provided so uh there's always a plus side so so many things so uh i've learned a lot of things in publishing and a lot of things in comics that uh, are invaluable and the people i've met along the way you know, they're very nice people i mean you know even even the guys that copy other people's manga, you know, usually they're pleasant people in real life. They just mean well. They just they just don't know how to create their own stuff yet. That's how I see it. You know, eventually they'll find their voice. You know, if they persist. <laughs> so, yeah, as long as they don't stop. <laughs> yeah. No, but again, I, I, I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it was. You know, it definitely oh, was. Yeah, uh, you guys are in your twenties. You you got your whole life ahead of you, man. <laughs> I'm excited for you guys because now you you have a lot of these things. Like I I don't know how I was able to do it without Google. Now I'm like Google a beach ball or dog leaping up to catch a frisbee or some even some everything. There's like literally. Even just Russian grandma fishing, and there's somebody, there's a picture of that. You know, it's like it's incredible. We we have all these resources now, and uh, you know, I'm lucky. You 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 guys are so lucky to have all these resources ahead of you. So things are looking good, <laughs> you know. And you have the internet to promote your work, you know. Because I came at the infancy of all this, you know. One, there wasn't a Facebook when I began, you know. <laughs> oh man! And I tell you something. I gotta tell you something. How old are you now? I'm 27. So okay. you're 27. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nico, how old are you? 28. So you guys are young. You know what? I I I began my comic book career at 28. It literally. <laughs> So you've already been done. You're already you've already been doing stuff in, even earlier than me, you know. So I began rather late. So uh, yeah, you, you got you guys have a lot of years ahead. I thought my life was over when I turned thirty. Nah, it just began. Here <laughs> you're like oh, I'm thirty years old. I keep, <laughs> I keep hearing that story. You know, by like now, like when I'm, I'm just getting started, so. I will take that yeah. in. You know. and seriously, guys, you got a lot of years, so just have fun. And man, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Before you close us out, Nico, uh, let me just go ahead and uh, yeah, I know share we, these comments. We're a little bit over. Sure Let's thing, yeah. Uh, Imagine us, uh, good old Rod. Uh, good to see you on. Hey. It's been a long time, sir. Uh, oh, hey, Imagine those. Rod. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine um, those. There you go. And then um, no, Jeffrey imagine. Lilly, hey gang. Okay. We have Launch Door. The positive energy in your guest is over 9,000. I absolutely yeah. love it. Thanks. Right. Yeah, that, that's why I say I, I'm caught sort of like these things sort of turn into a motivational speaking tour for me all the time. <laughs> you know, because I always encourage people, yeah, you got to follow your dream now. All right. <laughs> So, Nico, you want to go ahead and close us out? Very well. Again, Rod, we appreciate you coming on, and uh, and especially with the again, as the last uh, commenter just said here, with all the energy you provided and you know the influence you're giving to uh, a lot of the other uh, folks uh, within within the community, especially in our generation. You know, this wisdom, knowledge, and energy is well welcome. Ladies, gentlemen, guys and gals, fellow shining lights, and I'll thank you all for coming on tonight. Please be sure to like and uh, follow all the social media platforms for for Rod over here. Um, but to go ahead and you know put in uh, a couple of, or, or you know, a couple of uh, social media platforms here in a moment 
and uh, we'll have some of the others, you know, listed in the description. The um, no, nah, there it is, right there. Patreon, Facebook, and uh, about to throw out the Twitter right now. And of course, uh, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, make this video this, blow this, this, up. This, you know, this video here, uh, and all the spotlights, you know, should you be in, you know, should you like them? And of course, want uh, want us going gearing towards season four because you already know that it's getting it's on fire right now. Oh, yeah, we got five more episodes left in this season, so of course, be on the lookout for the next guest that we have. But again, you know. I'm happy that you came on today, Rod. You know, it's definitely, this was a, an honor to have you on. So. Likewise. 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 It's a pleasure, guys. Thank you, Thank you so much. You know, and with that said, uh, fellow Shining Lights, we will catch you all later. See you guys later.